Hey everyone, Rose here, and I finally have time to make videos again. I finished the retopology in the last two videos, so now it's time for the UV map. I start by cleaning up the scene, deleting any unnecessary objects and materials that I still have lying around, and making sure all my shrink wrap modifiers and all that are applied. I also tweak the geometry in a handful of places. And now it's time to unwrap, starting with the body. I use Ctrl and Select and set it to Tag Seams to mark out all my seams, and start separating out the arms, legs, and tail from the torso. Currently, I still have the mirror modifier on because that's really practical to just make sure all my seams are perfectly symmetrical so I don't have to worry about flipping them over. This way, both sides of the model would share the same part of the texture. That's fine if the texture is going to be perfectly symmetrical, but in this case I want a bit of asymmetry in it, so I'm going to apply the mirror modifier later. At this point, I turn on Live Unwrap by pressing U and then selecting Live Unwrap. That way, every time I add a seam, it automatically updates the UV map. So I can see where all my islands are and which part I'm editing and whether I'm getting any weird stretching. I'm a bit confused at this point about how exactly I'm gonna go about the fur. At first I pretty much outline it and give it all separate islands, but I'm really not sure how the stretching looks, so I add in a UV grid texture to the material and turn on texture in the viewport so I can see where and how I'm getting stretching, especially around the fur. With that in place, I can now address the fur in a slightly more effective way. I add seams around the base of the tail and then address the little chunks of fur sticking out the side. I figured the best way to approach them is essentially cutting them in half vertically and uh, that way, despite them having a bit of an awkward seam right in the front, they have texture from the top and texture from the bottom, so they don't get like super weird stretching. Um, if you've seen someone like unwrap a cylinder without having a seam down the side, uh, you'll notice that it essentially looks like a circle and the base of the circle gets way more stretched out textures and the inside gets them like super compressed and that's not so great. So just having this line down the edge and uh, along the top uh, kind of reduces that and makes sure they all have a decent amount of space on the texture without too much distortion. Since that worked out pretty well, I do the same thing around the back of the legs and around the feet and later on along the hands too. The nice thing is that I can also now remove the weird seams I had put around the ankles and wrists, so I won't have one super visible like awkward seam right in the middle of the leg. You might notice that I try and keep my seams in places where they aren't super visible as much as possible. Of course, it isn't always possible to hide them completely, but for example, uh, along the feet here, I try and keep them to the bottom as much as possible so they aren't super visible from the top, which is where you'll be looking at them the most. And I try and keep the seams at the back of the leg rather than at the front. So again, when you're looking at the character from the front view, you don't get uh, super awkward scenes. If seams are aligned really well with the UV map and the texture is high enough resolution, usually you don't get much of an issue, but sometimes you still get slightly awkward visible edges and just limiting that to places where you won't notice it generally is better for the overall appearance of the model. Anyway, I do the fur around the hands pretty much the same way I did the same fur around the feet. One thing you might notice me doing is adding a little cut into the inside part of a chunk of fur that sticks out quite far. Uh, that's just because of the same thing I mentioned earlier with the cylindrical unwrapping. If you don't put that seam along the side, it ends up getting super stretched out at the tip, which is not very nice. <laughs> 
And now it's time for the tip of the tail. Here the tufts of fur aren't arranged in really neat rows, so I can't use the strategy of just going around and making a seam across all the tips. So instead I essentially outline all the individual chunks, and then add in these small seams again to the inside facing part of the tufts to make sure I don't get like super bad stretching leading up to the tip. And that actually worked out pretty nicely. This area ended up with quite a lot of visible seams, but because they're all kind of in line with the flow of the texture and the flow of the shape, they won't be very noticeable because when I paint it, the lines essentially are gonna go in the same direction, so yeah, you won't really see them much. Plus, it's in the on the tail, which is relatively far from where your focus usually is gonna be on the character. With that done, I'm pretty much done with the whole body, so I apply the mirror modifier. Though at this point I do decide to tweak some of the seams around the legs a little bit. Specifically, I remove the seam going across the top of the knee and instead just extend the two seams going along the side. Uh, since you're going to be seeing the character from the front more so than from, like, say, the side or the back, uh, it's not as much of a concern that there are two seams along the side. And now that the body is done, it's time for the next thing. I move on to the toes next. At first I try just adding one long seam around the center, but I get a whole bunch of distortion, so I have to change my plan halfway through. Instead, I go with a seam going around the bottom edge and wrapping all the way around to the top. That way it's pretty much invisible from uh, the top when the body is there but I don't get super bad, weird distortion. Plus, it's each individual toe has just one UV island, so I'm not going to be losing them while I'm trying to arrange my islands later on. And from the feet right up to the hands. For this part, the unwrapping was really simple. I just made one long seam across all the fingers, up to the fingertips, and round the back of the hand. I tweaked a little, little bit until I was happy with the lack of distortion, and then I could move on to the next part qu pretty quickly. For the hands and feet, I actually keep the mirror modifiers on them because there isn't really going to be any like asymmetry between them, so it just saves a little bit of texture space. Now for the eyes. The eyes actually come with their default UV sphere uh, UV map, but that didn't really work well, so instead I added four long seams all the way around the back of the model, from the middle of the eye all the way to the back, leaving out the spaces that will be visible when the head is in place. Next up, the horns. They're super distorted now because they don't have any seams, but the unwrapping process was really simple for them. I just add one long seam around the entire length, and then one around the base. I don't quite take the loop around the base completely around, I leave out a small space so that way the two pieces stay connected and I don't lose them later on while sorting UVs. And now for the hair. I separate that out into individual chunks similar to how I did the tail, and then I add seams around the back or fully around the edge of the individual strands of hair to reduce the distortion. To properly see what I'm doing, especially on individual pieces like this, I pop in and out of local view by using slash on the numpad. That way I can work on my seams without having other objects in the way, but when I want to check how everything looks in like the big picture, I can just pop back out of local view and make sure it all works. Again, like I said earlier, I try and keep the seams in places where they aren't going to be super visible from the front. And that worked out pretty well here. I had a couple little bits that gave me a bit of trouble, but eventually I figured everything out. And now it's time for the face, which I've been putting off for a while. At first, the just automatic unwrap looks pretty alright, but there are two problems. For one, this one's still relying on the mirror modifier, and two, there are quite a few places that still have a lot of distortion. 
I start with the ear because that's the easiest thing to unwrap. I just make a big seam around the entire bottom of it to cut it off and then I make a seam around the edge of the ear to separate the top from the bottom and with that it's already completely unwrapped. The inside of the ear isn't very visible from most angles so that's where I put the seam. Now I add one big seam around the bottom edge of the face to separate it from the mane. I also outline the cheek fur the same way I did the one around like the tail and stuff like that, essentially along the edge and then around the top. That way I won't get that much distortion and I don't have to worry about it later on. Next I add a seam around the eyes. I make sure that it's put in a place where it isn't visible when the eyes are there. After that I add a seam around the lips, making sure that it isn't visible when the mouth is closed. To get a better view of what I'm doing, I hide the mirror modifier for a bit and that way I can essentially look into the side of the face. Next I outline the bottom of the mane, essentially separating the bottom part that's overlapping with the body from everything else. Again, I try and keep this seam on the inside as much as possible, so it isn't super visible when the model is all together. I'm kind of putting off addressing the mane, so instead I do the tongue. I pretty much just add one big long seam along the bottom and then apply the mirror modifier. But I really can't put it off any longer, so I have to address the mane. For the front, the individual like chunks of hair aren't arranged in rows, so I approach them in the same way I did the tail and the front hair. I just separate out the individual chunks and add small seams um, to make sure they don't stretch too much at the tips. There are a couple of spots where I can wrap multiple chunks together in one big seam and still give them individual like little seams along the back to reduce stretching. At this point in the UV layout part of the screen, I turn on stretching in the overlay so that way you can actually see which parts are stretching more or less and I don't have to just depend on the distortion in the uh, grid texture but it really only just confirms like the strategy I'd been using, so I continue with that. For the back, since the fur is arranged in more like rows, I can just add long seams in between the rows and then at the bottom, add small seams again on the individual hairs to make sure they don't stretch too much. And I'm already done with the mane, that actually didn't end up taking long at all, which is nice for a change. Now I apply the mirror modifier to the whole head object and address the face. I'm getting a whole lot of stretching, especially around the snout, so I try and mess around and figure out a way to fix it. At first I try to just like edit the UVs themselves, but that really doesn't work, so I need to add a couple more scenes. I don't really want to add seams to the face, because that's uh, kind of the part that you look at the most, and I don't want like a bunch of big seams going through the middle. But eventually I figure out that just adding a big seam to the lower jaw pretty much fixes all my issues. And I can have the seam uh, at the top going around just to the forehead, so it's pretty much completely covered by the hair. I tweak a couple of spots, especially like around the um, lips and stuff, until I'm pretty happy with how even the topology is. Then I pin all my vertices in place so I don't lose the hard work I spent attaching everything and making sure it fits together.
At this point it looks like I'm pretty much done unwrapping all the objects. So I go into edit mode, select everything and look for any spots that aren't unwrapped. The first thing I find is the earrings. So I just add one quick seam to them and unwrap them and they're done already. Now I start messing around with some layout stuff, uh, figuring out the best way to pack all my UVs so they don't waste too much texture space. And then I realized that I hadn't yet done the teeth, so I really quickly do those. I'm keeping the mirror modifier on them again because they're just not going to be visible very much and they don't really need the extra little bit of detail from asymmetry. So I just add a quick seam along the top and that's done. And now I have all my UVs, all the individual objects are unwrapped, I don't have any more stretching. But they're really arranged in a kind of awkward fashion, the, all the stuff that belongs together is kind of strewn all about the map and it's not really looking so good. So I start selecting all the objects that belong together and kind of clumping them together into one group. Uh, starting with the hair, I move the face right next to that, and I do the horns and the ears up to the face and the hands into one spot and the eyes to the face too. I put the mane to the side and just grab all the individual pieces and like separate them out so I can know what's where. I do the rest of the proper sorting and stuff off camera because that's going to be really boring and I wanted to try out a couple of different things for that. In the end I actually ended up using an add-on called UV Packmaster. It essentially arranges your UV islands to take up as much of the space as possible so you don't waste your texture resolution. And it even has a couple of options to sort them by like shape or size or material. So I could organize them in a way that all the pieces that kind of belong together and will have a similar color also ended up together. And here's what I ended up with. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think I struck a pretty decent balance between not having too many seams, but also uh, not having a bunch of distortion. I kind of aimed more for less distortion because I knew I was going to use a really high resolution texture on it anyway, so having a couple more seams wouldn't be a huge issue. And speaking of textures, I've actually already painted the texture, so that video is going to come out sometime very soon. I'm also finally done with my written exams, so I should be able to get videos up on time again, which is really nice. Anyway, that's all for me for this video, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe and all that, and maybe check out one of my other videos to the right. If you'd like to see more of my art or maybe get a commission from me, I've put links to all that in the description below. And I've also put a link to the Discord server. Anyway, I hope you have a nice day and see you all next time.